you're kind of far away. <laughs> Better for you to catch me than to me catch you. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number 6. <clears throat> and uh, we'll begin reading verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having it on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. This morning I want to preach my third message on the subject of the soldier on the battlefield. The soldier on the battlefield. As I mentioned before, we are, as God's people, we are living a varied life. We're sometimes called runners. We're sometimes called pilgrims, we're called stewards, we're called to be soldiers. But we're not only soldiers, we are soldiers on a foreign land, and that foreign land is a battlefield. It's enemy territory. And this battle, this battle that's been going on for Many, many years. It's been going on for generations. Uh, ever since, way back yonder in the Garden of Eden, when that old serpent uh, went in and deceived, sin entered into the world with the fall of man, there's been a battle that's been happening. You and I, as God's people, we are a part of that, that battle. Uh, last time, last time we stopped at verse number 13. Today we will consider, begin to consider the armor itself. Uh, you know, whenever we think about the armor of God... He says, he, he, we read earlier there in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We mustn't think of the armor of God as being something physical. We can't think of it as being carnal in nature, something that we would be able to touch or feel, something that we would physically go and put on in the morning. We get up, something that we lay down at night before we pillow ourselves to sleep. Uh, it's not something that uh, something of this world. For this battle, it is a spiritual battle, spiritual nature, and so it is with the armor of God. And so we look down at verse fourteen. He says, uh, he 
says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now in the message before, we were told to put on the whole armor of God. Not just some of it, not just pieces of it, but the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. That's what he said in verse 13. Now, the next verses, the verses that we'll consider, we're going to consider what this armor entails. What the pieces of this armor are all about. On a physical battlefield... <coughs> Physically, a uh, soldier has different pieces of equipment that they must have. Uh, they're issued various pieces of armor, various pieces of equipment, and all of these serve a purpose. As Paul writes under inspiration of the Spirit, he gives a description of each one of these pieces spiritually that we need in order to be able to to withstand an evil day. Those things that we need that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the de devil to make sure that we're equipped completely. Just like a soldier on the battlefield, we would not want to in this world, if we were serving in the United States Army or the Navy or whatever branch of the service we might want to serve in, we would not want to go into battle, uh, leaving our equipment behind, nor would we want to uh, show up for a battle and leave a portion of it behind. We want to take it all. So it is with the spiritual battle. We've got to have the whole armor of God in order to be successful. And so, in verse 14, he tells us to stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. So we're told to stand, having our loins girt about with the truth. What is this girdle of truth that he's talking about? Uh, well, the reference is to the waist or the loins. Uh, if you hold your place there and go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, I believe we can tie this in with uh, something that uh, the Spirit inspired Peter to say. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 he says wherefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ he says gird up the loins of your mind the mind is the mainspring of action. The reference here is the holding in and regulation of the thoughts of the mind. First, the thought, and then the carrying out of action. Uh, whenever, uh, whenever somebody says, uh, my mind is the greatest weapon I've got, Sure enough, that is a lot of times the most accurate statement that a person can say. Uh, now, uh, whenever the mind is girded, it is well disciplined. The mind that is not girded, the mind that is not disciplined, it is running wild and it is loose. The loins 
are the place of the strength, and so is the mind. And so, what we see here, if we kind of tie these two passages together, if our mind run, if our mind, if our thoughts run wild, we'll have no fellowship with God. We lose that uh, fellowship that 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 that. that, that, that that we have with the Lord, and we have no power against Satan. We think back to a passage here that came to uh, came up while I was studying this in Isaiah chapter twenty six. Isaiah chapter twenty six and verse three. Isaiah 26 and verse 3, he says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. So, mind who is set on the Lord, he says, kept in perfect peace. The storm could be raging around, the battle could be horrible, things could be awful, we could be in perilous times. Oh wait, the Bible says we are, very dangerous times, and yet the child of God can be in perfect peace. How? By having your mind to be, uh, to, 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 to be our loins girt about with the truth. To put on this key piece of armor. But then we get into this thought. What is, when, when we consider the girdle of truth, Pilate asked the question in John 18, what is truth? What is truth? If you go back to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse, uh, verse number 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So as Pilate asked the question, what is truth? So also our generation and our culture or the culture of this world, not our culture, but the culture of this world also wants to know what is truth. There is no standing on truth as defined in our world today. Talk to folks today and they'll tell you the truth is subjective. That it's based off of a person's perspective, their feelings, or their opinions. Or, some people will tell you that truth is relative. In other words... What's right, beautiful, or true for me might not be right, beautiful, or true for you. Seems like not something to stand on. Seems like a lot of sinking sand or slippery slope. But there is such a thing as absolute truth, regardless of what the world at large says. God's Word tells us that we can stand with our loins girt about with the truth. What is the truth? The Bible has the answer. In John 14, 
John 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto, unto the Father but by me. Jesus says, I am the truth. We can stand resting upon him. Also in John 17 and verse 17, he says this, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. See, we have no need of hesitation on the battlefield because we can rest easy on the solid foundation of the truth, the rock that is unmovable, the truth of God's Word, Jesus Christ. God's truth. Satan is a liar. The only way that we can meet him is with the truth. God's truth, absolute truth. The truth that remains for all generations. The truth that existed in Adam's day. The truth that existed in Moses' day. The truth that existed in Noah's day. The truth that existed during the apostles' day. The truth that exists in our grandparents' day. The truth that exists today. It's unmovable. You and I can rest easy standing on that. Satan prevails over ignorance by means of guile or deceit, but he has no power over those whose minds are regulated by the truth of God and His Word. You and I can rest on that. We can stand on that. And we can stand on a sure foundation of the truth. In John chapter 8, John chapter 8, begin verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He said, You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Free from what? Free from indecisiveness, free from hesitations, free from free from free free from the power and receipt of the devil. Free from the lies and the the, the deceptions of this world. Free in Christ. Back in our text there in Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 14. To stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, heavy on the breastplate of righteousness. As we put on this girdle of truth, we can stand against the wiles of the devil. To put on the girdle of truth means applying the word to the first movements of the mind. Imagine, I mentioned this battle all started this war all started back yonder in the Garden of Eden. Imagine that first shot. Imagine how different it would have been had Eve applied that there at the beginning. When tempted by the devil there, 
But we see it. We, 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 we see her, her, her failure there as she, as she was deceived. We can oftentimes look back in our lives, the times that we've been tempted, and we see how we failed. Imagine how differently things would have turned out if we would have applied this. There is a perfect example in the Scriptures, and if you go back to see when the Lord was tempted. Every time that old devil brings something up, what did the Lord do? Answered him with Scripture. Each and every time. The Lord was girded with the truth. We see that in action there in the New Testament. So we're told to have our loins girt about with the truth, standing therefore, but then he says, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. All the armor is connected. We're told to put on the whole armor of God, of course. But uh, but these two pieces are particularly connected. That word and connects them pretty tightly there. There's a strong connection between the girdle of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. See, the breastplate of righteousness has to do with the heart. The mind and the heart are very much connected, and so should, should be the protection of them. Sincerity in mind and holiness of heart must go together. In Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, and verse 23. The wise preacher here says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Understand that the the heart is the affections and the conscience. To put on the breastplate of righteousness is to maintain power of holiness over our affections and the things that we desire. We need protection there. In Acts chapter 24... Acts chapter 24. Passage that uh, we've recently looked at on Wednesday nights. Uh, verse uh, 16. Paul's defense before Felix there. He says, and herein do I exercise myself and have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Paul, Paul, I believe he was exhibiting that he put on the breastplate of righteousness. Here having a good conscience, not only towards God, but also towards men. He had broken no law of God nor law of man. He was a good citizen. Good citizen of heaven. Good citizen of Rome. He was a good, good Jew. He, he, he caused no trouble. As such... He had a good defense before the governor there. 
We need that breastplate of righteousness in a big way. Like the songwriter said, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. The, the mind and the heart are very much connected. The breastplate of righteousness is something that helps us to withstand Satan's temptations unto unholiness. The girdle of truth helps us meet Satan's evil suggestions to defile the mind. The breastplate of righteousness is needed to foil his efforts to corrupt the affections or defile the, the conscience. No wonder these two are listed here in in in, 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 in our in our in our text. If we go back there for just a moment. Ephesians chapter six. Kind of bring this to a close. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and ha having on the breastplate of righteousness. Stand. Stand therefore with these two things on. And of course, he continues on. There's more to it. This ain't all. But it's a start. You've got to start with your mind. Your heart. Where your desires are, where your where your thoughts are. It's where your actions will go. Amen. So we'll kind of stop there, and uh, Lord willing, we'll continue on. See how the Lord has provided for us those things that we need to be able to, to stand in the battle as as we as we go forth in this in this life as soldiers of the cross. Brother Brother Justin, would you please pray for us? Father, we thank you for this message and the time to come and be with our brothers and sisters. We thank you for the, the word of your church.